We're going to pick up a story in Matthew chapter 18 in just a moment, but, uh, you know, what do you do when you've been mistreated by somebody? Don't answer that. <laughs> uh, how do you feel when somebody treats you unfairly? Um, when they maybe damage your reputation, when they offend you, when they do something that, that really hurts, you know, more internally than maybe on the outside, but... Uh, what, what do you do with that? That's what we're going to talk about today. But, oh, you know what? I just remember. I forgot. Oh, oh, oh. back up. I forgot to do something. Um, yeah, I told somebody I'd do something. If I don't do it now, oh, I'm going to forget. So, Garen, come here. I know you asked me beforehand. Come on up, if you would here, Garen. Come on. Stand. Wow. You're taller than you were when I, when I saw you sitting down. How old are you, Garen? 15. Okay. Well, you asked me uh, before the service if, uh, if I could change a $100 bill for you, so I, I told you I wouldn't. I better do it now because otherwise, you know, things get busy after service. So give me, give me the 100 here. Okay. Ooh, nice. Now, what is a teenager doing with a crisp $100 bill? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. All right. But uh, okay, so you want change for the 100 All right. Well, I think I can help you out with that. Let's see here. Got a five, that's not going to do a whole lot. Okay. All right, so I've got a hundred here, and um, all right, I'll, I'll change this out. Is 20s okay? Yes. Oh, 20s okay, okay. There's 20. Okay, there's 40. There's 60. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, that wasn't very fair, was it? Huh? You gave me a hundred, and I gave you sixty back. Um, you, but you trust me, right? I mean, I, I'm your pastor. You, you, you trust me, right? Maybe just a little nod. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. All right, I'll, I'll make it right before the end of the service. Thank you. Let's give Garen a hand for helping me out here. Yes. What what made that transaction a problem was the fact that he gave me a hundred, and I only gave him sixty back. He was shortchanged, wasn't he? Have you ever felt shortchanged? You've invested more in something than you've been given back. You poured into people more than they gave you back. Uh, maybe a project at work, you were all in. You were so committed, or maybe a ministry at church, or some group, or some relationship, you were like all in, and you know. You put 100 in and you only got 60 back. You were shortchanged. You can't really go through life without experiencing that, with, with being shortchanged. No. Treat people better than they treat you back. You pour into children who don't really pour back. I, I mean, it happens to all of us. We, we've been shortchanged. Um. And it just, it hurts. It's not fair. And, you, you know, you walk away with, with respect like, like Garen did. He was respectful. He even had a smile on his face. But deep down inside, there's probably, you, you walk away with a little bit of frustration. Like, wait a minute. I gave you 100. You only gave me 60 back. Maybe you're a little confused because, hey, I, I you know, he's the pastor. I, I thought at least I could trust him. And... So all of a sudden, we, uh, we have those thoughts and feelings underneath the surface and, you know, left unchecked, left unhealed, left undealt with, wow, it can turn into some resentment, can turn into bitterness. We kind of put a Band-Aid on that wound until somebody maybe bumps into us again and all of a sudden, all this pent-up emotion and anger and frustration comes spilling out. Into, over all of our relationships. That's what happens when we uh, feel shortchanged. And maybe it's not just what people do to us. Sometimes we do it to ourselves because maybe we compare ourselves to somebody else. We see another married couple and we're like, oh, they're so, they're so happy. They're talking so much. They're just so in love. And we turn over to our spouse and we don't know what to say. We don't have anything to say. You're on scrolling through social media and you see all these other people having so much fun and they're going on some kind of vacay and you're like, ah, oh, 
I wish I had that. I wish we had that. I feel like I'm getting gypped. I feel like I'm getting ripped off. You know, you're 40 years old and you're still single. You, you didn't expect that. At first, it was kind of cute. But now you're getting kind of tired of it. You didn't expect that. You thought you'd be married and have a family. You, you, you feel shortchanged. And now... You know, now Fred, who you never thought was very cute, now he's not looking too bad because, you know, hey. Or maybe you've been married for 30 years and now he doesn't want anything to do with you or she doesn't want anything. She's gone. Or maybe you gave your heart and soul to a company for 35 years and now they don't want you anymore. They call it downsizing, which is supposed to make it easier, but truth is they just, they really don't want you anymore. You've been shortchanged. And so there's a bunch of people, maybe an auditorium filled with people who walk around having been taken advantage of, having been shortchanged, feeling like something has been taken from them, stolen from them. And so now they kind of walk through life like, you owe me. You, you owe me. I gave my part. I, I expect at least something. You owe me. You know, but we go through this life with these with unhealed wounds and wondering what to do with that. So what do we do with it? Well, I want you to know that the story we're going to look at is a great illustration, maybe the clearest in all of the scriptures as to what Jesus says we should do with that. And this, this isn't going to surprise you. It's not, nothing that you haven't heard before, but he says, you know what you have to do with that? You have to forgive. But Jesus doesn't use that word forgive. He uses a phrase. But I believe it gives the clearest example of what it means to forgive. So Jesus was with his disciples, and it's found in Matthew 18. I'm just going to tell you the story, the story that the master teller Jesus told Peter came up to Jesus. He must have been provoked by something that happened to him. Maybe he got offended, somebody hurt him. And so he said, Master, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus replied, no, not seven times, 77 times. In other words, don't keep track. Don't count. And so then he launches into this story to, to help uh, flesh out what he meant. And so he said, the kingdom of heaven, let me tell you what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a king who decided that it was time to settle his accounts. So he called his servants in, and one servant came in who owed him like 10,000 talents. That would be about a million dollars. <laughs> it was a huge amount. And the master knew that he couldn't pay it back, so he ordered that this master and his wife and his children all be sold into slavery to pay for his debt. Well, you can imagine the servant. He just said, he pleaded with the, the master, said, Master, please be patient with me. Be patient with me. Give me some more time. I will pay back what I owe you. Well, the master knew that this guy couldn't pay it back, millions of dollars on a servant's wage. So what did the master do? He had pity on him. And he said, I cancel your debt. And he let him go. Do you know how Jesus defines forgiveness? Is by that phrase, I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. I feel like you stole something from me. I feel like you shortchanged me. I feel like maybe you ripped me off. But I've decided that you don't owe me anymore. I cancel your debt. That's what forgiveness really is. Why don't you say that with me? Because that, that's a great beginning to experience maybe some forgiveness that you need in your own heart and in your life. Why don't you say this with me? Cancel the debt. You don't owe me anymore. That was good. How about one more time? Cancel the debt. You don't owe me anymore. Now, how do we get there? When you look at your own hurt, 
your unmet expectations, your disappointments, maybe your family background, your past, all the baggage that you brought to, that you carry on in life, you bring it to relationships. When you think of it, think of it in terms that someone has taken from you, they've, they've stolen from you, they've, they've maybe robbed you, and so they owe you. That's why we say, you owe me an apology. I mean, you did something and, and, and you, you owe me an apology. We say other things like, you, you owe it to me to be the spiritual leader of our home. Men, how many of you heard that through the years? You, you owe it to me to be the spiritual. I mean, we started out that way. We used to pray. We used to have devotion. We go to church. Now you don't even show up. Now you don't even pray with me. I feel like I got ripped off. You owe it to me to be the spiritual leader. You owe it to, to me to spend time with me. Huh. Huh. You used to? I was high up on your priority list, and now everything else comes first. You, you owe it to me to, to want to spend some time with me. You owe it to me to quit using, quit drinking. You owe it to me. You owe it to me to treat me with respect, to not humiliate me in public. All around your friends, you know, you just make me feel like I'm the worst mom or worst dad in the world. You just, you embarrass me around your friends. You owe it to me to at least treat me with some respect. And so we go through life feeling like you owe it to me. You owe it to me to at least admit you were wrong. Is that too much to ask for you to finally say I'm wrong? You owe it to me to keep your job, to support the family. You, you owe that to us. You owe that to me. And really, when you look around at the people that maybe disappoint you and that maybe they've hurt you, guess what? <laughs> they've been shortchanged too. If you dig deep enough into their story and their life, you know that they've been shortchanged. I mean, the, the dad who struggled to express affection to you, you look at his dad and his dad's dad, and they were shortchanged. They couldn't give you what they didn't have. And so we got a bunch of people walking around. You owe me. And as long as that's in there, <laughs> as long as that... Thought, that feeling, that emotion that's attached to this, that whatever that is, guess what? There's not going to be healing. There's not going to be any for forgiveness in there. And anybody who bumps into that wound is going to now feel your pain. Your hurt is going to become their hurt. And I know we want to we wanna pay them back. We think, yes, you know, we wouldn't use the word revenge, but that's really what it is. We camouflage revenge with, you know, I, I, they, need to, they need to feel what I felt. I want to give them a taste of their own medicine. That's revenge is what that is. You know, and, and so there's momentary satisfaction because you finally said it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I laid him low. I said, man, you know, well, they'll, never, they'll never do that again. We feel so good because we feel like we really, but you know what? You're not healed. It doesn't go away. It's only momentary satisfaction. And then we keep people at arm's length. We've been hurt so much that we protect ourselves and, and uh, we have a hard time showing uh, uh, affection. Words go unspoken. Affections withheld. We live behind walls and we just bump into each other all the time. So how long are you, how long am I going to live with that poison inside of us. You decide. I'll decide. Well, the rest of the story tells the consequences when you don't deal with it. So this servant, who was forgiven everything, I mean, his debt was canceled, and he was let go. Guess what he does? He goes out and he finds somebody who owes him some money. 
And he finds a fellow worker that only owes him maybe a, a couple thousand. Now, now he owed millions, and the, this guy only owed him a, a couple thousand bucks. And so he, he, he demands, pay me the money that you owe me. There it is, you owe me. And that servant says, well, man, can you be patient with me? Give me a little bit more time. I, you know, I, I'll pay back everything I owe. But this man refused to cancel his debt. So he grabbed him, he choked him, he threw him in prison until he could pay back his debt. Everybody's looking this, uh, at this drama going down, right? They're like, whoa, I mean, I don't want to get involved in that because there's something really going down. But they, they, they see everything that happens, so they go to the master and they say, master, you're not going to believe it. But this guy who you forgave his debt, now he's, he's demanding payment back for his little, little, little debt that he had. And so they told the master everything that happened. And so now the master called this servant in. And he was angry. And he said, aren't you the guy that I just forgave? I canceled millions of dollars of your debt. Shouldn't you at least have mercy, have pity, and cancel the debt of what somebody owes you? But since he refused, guess what happens? He gets thrown into prison He's, or, there, he's orders them to torture him until he can pay back all that he owes. And then Jesus says these incredibly sobering, in-your-face statement. He says, this is how your heavenly Father will treat you if you don't forgive your brother and sister from your heart. Whew. Not just your head, because sometimes they, oh, I've, I've, I've forgiven them. I've, 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 I've dealt with that. I've forgiven them. But oh, somebody just pricks that wound, bumps into that wound. Oh, it's right back up there, and you're spewing out all kinds of stuff. Or you're, you're giving people the, they give me the cold shoulder at church. I'm going to give them the cold shoulder back. Yeah, they say, hey, how you doing? They don't really want to know. And we treat people that way. There's a lot to learn. A couple big lessons that we can learn from this passage. First lesson, since it's the school year already now, first lesson is this. You and I lost our right not to forgive at the cross. We lost our right. Because think about it. You've been forgiven for so much. I've been forgiven so much. An insurmountable debt. We could never pay God back. We've been imprisoned in our own sinfulness so God, what did he do? He sent his son, Jesus Christ, clothed in flesh, but blood flowing through him, and through the currency of his own blood, he made the payment. He took the keys from heaven. He unlocked those prison doors of sin. He opened it up and said, come on. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he said, I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. Whew. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And when you believe that and you receive that and you begin to let that truth begin to circulate in your bloodstream, you're born again. There's a new life. But even a mature Christian can go through life and still be hurt and let that resentment carry things in our own heart that corrupt our lives. But we've lost our, our right. And, and see, that's why Jesus said, this is how the kingdom of heaven is like. It might not be like your family it was. It might not be like your experience at church. It might not be like your experience at work or in your marriage or, or with your friends. But this is what the kingdom of God is like. I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anything. You're free and I'm free. And Paul, later on, he t tells a bunch of churches and uh, he writes a letter to the Colossians. He says this. He canceled the record of the charges against us. There it is. He canceled the record of the charges, of the debt against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And so when you look at your hurt, when you look at that pain, regardless of what it is, when someone hurts you, sometimes what we think we could just... We can hold that and say, well, God, I know they did me wrong and I, I'm mad about it or, you know, but can I get a pass, God? 
Do I have to really deal with it? Do I have to forgive? Can, can't I just keep kind of, you know, giving the cold shoulder? God says, no. I've canceled your debts. Now you need to cancel others. And Paul says that a few verses later. He says this, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord fa- forgave you. Here it is. He forgave you, so you must forgive others. So instead of saying, no, I'm not going to forgive, we say, God, in light of what you've done for me, you've canceled my debts. I am choosing to cancel the debts of those around me. We lost our right to not forgive at the cross. Second lesson is this. Forgiveness benefits the one who's been hurt. Forgiveness really benefits the one that's been hurt. We think it, it benefits the person, the other person, and it does. But how they respond to that is really between them and God. But it really benefits you. You see, it's more than just letting somebody off the hook for something that they did. Really what's at stake is your own freedom, the freedom from the prison of your own unforgiveness. And once you forgive, that's when you begin to walk in freedom and the healing journey begins. I say journey because it's not just a one and done overnight thing. It's a journey. There's forward steps and backward steps. But until you forgive, there, there, will, there will not be that freedom in Christ that maybe you've experienced to some degree, but so easily we can get entrapped again. And the consequences of not forgiving, my, they so many different areas. Personally, if you're a person who lacks compassion and mercy, you're going to hold everybody account. Everybody's got to play by the rules. Everybody's got to do it according to your control, trying to control outcomes. You're going to be a lonely person. Physically, it's going to affect you when it comes to carrying that load of stress. Anxious when you're around certain people, walking, avoiding certain things and certain conversations, certain people. Relationally, you're going to have some toxicity in your own relationships. The husband you have now is going to pay the price for the person who abused you when you were young. Men, you're truly going to end up like a caveman because that's the only safe place you can go to run. But you know how dark it is in that cave and how alone it is in that cave. Unable to confront and know what to do with those emotions that you've been taught to stuff all of your life and be tough. Those are the consequences. But when we look at forgiveness as it benefits the one who's been hurt. This isn't about getting two people together and, you know, laying everything out, all the cards on the table, unscrambling all the eggs, tying up all the loose ends in the relationship. It's not about that. You may not have relationship with them now or forever. And for some of you, that might be the appropriate boundary that you need. Maybe they're not even alive anymore. Maybe they're not in your life. But you still have to forgive because you're the one carrying that offense. You're carrying that weight and it'll take a toll. It'll cost you something. And you, you're going to have to learn how to forgive without receiving an apology. Isn't that hard? You're waiting for them to take the first step and say, well, you know, I am sorry. I was, no, you're going to have to learn to forgive without receiving an apology and without seeing any signs that they've changed, that there's reconciliation, or that they even agree or respond to you. But you still have to forgive. You have to do it for your own freedom because you're the one who benefits. Now, that's the lessons we can learn from the story, but there's some assignments. Again, since it's school time, two assignments, some homework. First one is this. Identify specifically what was taken from you. This is what forgiveness is. really involves these two things. Identifying specifically what was taken from you. And the second thing is this. Making a decision to cancel the debt that they don't owe you anymore. Let's go to the first one for a moment. Identify specifically what was taken from you. See, what we normally do is we forgive an event. 
I, I forgive my mom or my dad for abandoning the family. I forgive my sister for taking more of, of the inheritance than was her share. I, I forgive so-and-so across town for stealing my business. You know, whatever. It, we can identify the event. But if we stop there, it don't, that's only forgiveness from the head. We said the words, I, you know, I, for, I forgive you, but we really don't feel it. How do you get from the head to the heart when it comes to forgiveness? You have to do this next thing. Okay? You, have to, you have to identify what was taken, what was stolen. Maybe, a, maybe an easier way to put it is what you missed out on. Because, because your mom and dad, or mom or dad, abandoned the family, what did you miss out on? I know when our girls were in elementary school here in Dillsburg, they had uh, one day every year, it was dad, donuts with dad, and muffins with mom. And so all of us parents got to come in there and have a little donut with the kids, and it was so fun. It was just great. But oh, I can't tell you how many times my heart broke to see little boys and little girls without a mom there, without a dad there. I wonder what they had to tell their friends. Where's your mom? Where's your dad? Maybe that's what you missed out on. Maybe you missed out on a dad coming alongside you, putting his shoulder around you when you start struck out for three times in a row. Maybe you missed out on a mom taking care of you when you were sick because you always had to take care of your younger siblings because she wasn't there. I'll tell you what you stole from me. You stole my reputation. Do you know how long it had to take me to build back my credibility, to build back my financial credit? You ruined my credit. You spread lies and gossip about me. You know, that's, that's what I lost. It took me years to get my name back in this community. You know what I lost? I lost what it was like to have a whole family around the holidays. I feel like a ping pong ball having to go to this family and that side of the family. and That's what I missed out on. You see, it's one thing to forgive an event. Yes, I forgive my dad or my mom for leaving. But to get deeper, you've got to go to the emotion. You've got to move from the event and into the emotion. And, and, and really what you have to do, you've got to feel it. You got to learn to express it. Don't stuff it. Don't stuff it. You got to express it. Because then you have to mourn it. You have to put it to death. You have to mourn the loss of it. And here's why. Because the second thing is this to cancel the debt. Make a decision that they don't owe you anymore. And here's why. Because whatever was taken from you, whatever you missed out on, whatever you lost, guess what? They can't pay you back anyways. You have to come to the point where you realize my dad can't give me my childhood back. That person who stole my innocence and I've been twisted sexually ever since, they can't they can't give me my innocence back. So you have to get to the point where you say, how long am I going to hold on to this? They can't, they can't pay me back anyways. So I'm going to choose to cancel the debt. They don't owe me anyways. Because it's unrepayable. I mean, even if, you know, your ex can't give you those years back. Your, your adult now can't come back, even if they're groveling, they're coming with, uh, on their knees and they're repenting and, and, and they promise to never use again. They can't give you back those years when they were 15 and 16 and they made your life hell on earth. That debt is unrepayable. So what are you going to do with it? 
continue to carry that around with you? Or can you make a decision to cancel that debt? How long are you going to live in torment to something that cannot be undone? And Jesus is saying, cancel the debt. Tell them you don't owe me anymore. Otherwise, as you said in that last verse we read, you'll be the one who suffers. Now, you might think, well, oh, I've done that before, Pastor Mike. I've heard sermons on forgiveness, and I've, I've gone through the motions. What if I have those thoughts and feelings again? You're watching a movie, and all of a sudden it reminds you of something in your past, or you, know, you see something out in public, and you're like, oh, it just, it's like a knife in there. What do I do with those thoughts and those emotions? You're going to have them. But that's when every time you, you see that or feel that, you say that line, I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. You may have to say that over and over because here's what's going to happen. Over time, not overnight, not after this one sermon, but over time, the emotion that used to follow the hurt is going to follow the conscious decision you made to cancel the debt and say, you don't owe me anymore. You may have to say it a thousand times. There's times I have to say that sometimes every day. In my years of pastoring, having, you know, people come and go through the years, oh, my goodness, without a goodbye, without a, con a conversation, disappearing, and no, I mean, I've had to take a collection of those and just learn to say, you know what? I feel there's kind of a debt there because, man, I've invested in you and we've had a relationship and, you know, we've been through a lot together and I feel at least I, you owe me a conversation. But I've had to say, you know what? You don't owe me anything. And you know when you get there, oh, my goodness, then you can go to that family reunion without expecting anything from anybody. You can go to that, celebrate your niece or nephew's first birthday or that graduation or that holiday meal, you can go there and not have to look for a chance to, for revenge. You don't have to look for anything from them. You can go with open arms and say, you know, you're not in debt to me. I canceled that debt. You don't owe me anymore. You know how freeing that is? Whew. It takes work. But here's probably the best news. When you do that, now, look it. You'll be ready to use your hurt no longer as an excuse. Well, this is why I react that way. This is why I'm on edge. This is why I am. I keep people here. You'll take that hurt that you used as an excuse or maybe an explanation, and now you'll be able to help someone else. Until you re get there, you're not going to be able to help people very much. You can't take somebody where you haven't gone. And then you'll be able to take with the devil, the, the pain and shame that the devil wanted to bury you in, now you're going to be able to use it for God's glory. When you get there, then, wow, that's ministry. That's coming alongside people. That's helping people. You may think, well, do, do, I, do I have to have a sit down and talk with them? Not necessarily. In fact, I'm going to recommend that you maybe don't. I mean, you go up to somebody and say, hey, buddy, I forgive you. <laughs> they're either going to slug you <laughs> or they're going to say, forgive me for what? What are you talking about? They might not even know how they hurt you. They might not even care. They might be entrenched in the reason why they're still mad at you. But see, that's between them and God. You've got to clear your own heart out. Get rid of that poison. Get rid of that to toxicity. And one of the ways you do that is you forgive not from the head. Well, I did that. I forgive. No, from the heart. Feel it. Express it. Mourn it. Put it to death. And realize they can't pay you back anyways. But now... You're going to heal from it, and now God's going to use you in a mighty way. I want to leave this in prayer as we close. Some of you might not be ready to pray this prayer. Fair warning. You may need to do a little bit more homework. Go home, get a notebook, 
begin to write down, identify. You could have a whole page full of things that you feel were taken from you, you missed out on. Identify it, feel it, and then come to this point where you can pray this prayer. And some of you may need to listen to this message 10 times a day. (laughs) Or at least say that phrase, I cancel your debt to me. You don't owe me anymore until it moves from the head to the heart. And then you'll be ready to pray this prayer. Why don't we all pray this? We'll just read it together. And if you know of somebody in your heart that came to mind, something you know that you need to just get rid of today, pray it from your heart, and that healing process can begin even right now. Let's say this to Gary. Dear Dear Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, I I recognize that at the cross, I lost my right to not forgive. Thank you for forgiving me all of my sin against you. Lord, I've been harboring anger in my heart against... Now you fill in the blank. Take a moment here. Who's that person? Who's that group of people that you've been harboring some anger in your heart? Come on, you've got to be honest with yourself. It's touched us all to some degree. It's been a part of your past. It's a part of your present. It's time now to let it go. Lord, I feel feel like like they they have have taken taken from me. You fill in the blank. Love, family, marriage, respect. Just pause there for a moment. And Lord... Right Right now, now, I'm I'm choosing choosing to cancel cancel their their debt. debt. They don't don't owe me anymore. Please allow my painful memories to be a reminder of your grace, forgiveness, and healing in me. I don't want to inflict this pain on the people around me anymore. I let go of unforgiveness so I can walk in freedom and healing from this point forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your healing word, God. Thank you for the forgiveness that we've received. We didn't deserve it, but you gave it anyways. There's people in our life who may not deserve it, but we need to give it anyways. And we make a decision to do that, knowing that you'll help that to go from our head to our heart so we can truly understand the depth of the forgiveness that you taught us. We thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Hey, share the broadcast. You're going to see this come up. There's people that you know need to hear this word. Make sure you share that around today. All right? God bless you. Have a great week.